Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and today let's talk My Hero Academia, this time specifically looking at a hero and a quirk, Eraser Head and Erasure. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, whatever. Anyway, this video is going to be all about discussing this quirk and asking questions. We'll look at the quirk, break it down, and see if we can work out any explanations to justify it, and then we'll see if we can poke any holes in the logic of the quirk Erasure. It's pretty much going to be hard speculation powered by evidence of things that we've seen so far in the story. So let's start off by listing what we know as absolute truths. First, Erasure is an emitter type quirk. It prevents the activation of the quirk factor of a target if that target is in the line of sight of the user. Or in other words, as long as Aizawa can see the target, it's good to go. Another little note, it's emitted from Aizawa's eyes. Second, Erasure cannot cancel mutant type quirks. So say Ojiro can't have his tail just disappear. Although we received more clarification in recent chapters explaining that Ojiro would not be able to move his tail because the control of the mutant body part is dependent on the quirk factor, apparently. This causes an interesting logistical problem when you consider that the mutant type that was used to showcase the quirk's weakness in USJ had two extra arms. Would the quirk have prevented him from moving them? Unfortunately, that fight didn't progress for long enough for us to be sure. Third. Blinking interrupts the quirk, so eyes closed, no quirk. Fourth, Erasure can affect multiple targets at once. Fifth, the quirk doesn't require the target's conscious recognition, this just distinguishes it from other quirks that work at a distance like Shinzo's brainwash. And sixth, the quirk causes Aizawa's hair to stand. I'm just telling you that one because I have no idea how to explain that. Okay, so those are some of the basic truths. Let's work out some logistics. What are the mechanisms that allow this thing to work? Like how does it travel through the air and what exactly happens when it hits a target? This is one of those powers that works from a distance through non-visible means and causes a change in the opponent. The easiest solution would be to call it magic of course, but that's kind of a cop out. Instead. Let's assume the emission of this quirk takes the form of an electromagnetic wave, the emission source being Aizawa's pupil. We can rationalize it as an EM wave because the quirk comes from an organ designed to receive electromagnetic radiation and make sense of it, i.e. light. It being able to also generate it is within the realm of possibility. Where exactly that electromagnetic wave is being generated, however, is anyone's guess. Anyway, calling it an EM wave gives an easy explanation for how it can propagate through space, it's just electromagnetic radiation. If we were to place it on the spectrum, we can assume that it is right below visible light, if not in red light. The signal we see when the quirk activates is a red glow from Aizawa's eyes. Unfortunately, no character has commented on the eyes, so we have to assume that it's just an indicator for the viewers. If it weren't, however, it wouldn't make that big of a difference. It would just mean that the EM wave is right in the red light part of the spectrum. We know it's relatively near the visible light, however, because it has the same penetrating power as visible light. After all, the eyelid, which is super thin, and other obstructions such as walls prevent the quirk from affecting a target. If we embrace the explanation that it is an electromagnetic wave, we can apply other properties such as reflection. Since it's an EM wave near to visible light, we can assume it behaves the same way light does when it hits a reflective surface. So if Aizawa saw someone in a mirror and activated his quirk, their quirk should be erased by that logic. But wait, what exactly makes it erased? Well, since it's ultimately an issue of the quirk factor not being activated, we have to assume Erasure is somehow sending a signal to the target's brain. Since quirk activations are a conscious ability, we can argue that it's the brain that activates the quirk factor. So when it comes to Erasure, we know Aizawa needs to be able to see them, or rather they need to be unobstructed where he is looking. And since the quirk doesn't require the target to know Aizawa is looking at them, we know it's an unstoppable reaction that occurs in the target's body. We can assume that what happens is that the EM wave hits something with genetic material like skin and maybe causes a small discharge strong enough to affect the nerves between the skin. Once that happens, the nerves send the signal to the brain, halting the quirk activation process. We have to bring in nerves because the nervous system is hooked up directly to the brain. Unfortunately, we don't know how much of an opponent's body needs to be in the line of sight, but for the purpose of this explanation, I will assume all Aizawa needs is to be able to see skin. It doesn't matter how much. Characterizing it as an EM wave gives us a few more interesting scenarios, such as if an opponent was completely clothed with no skin showing, eyes closed, would erasure work considering that something as thin as an eyelid can block the quirk? Since the eyelid can block it, 
your clothes should be able to block it too, right? Yet, here we have someone who is completely covered as you can see on screen. Is he being affected because he's looking directly at Aizawa, therefore implying that the radiation is reaching him? Or does the thickness of the obstruction play a part into whether or not erasure will work? If we use the explanation of the wave, we would have to say that the wave, or whatever reaction it's causing, has slightly more penetrating power than we assumed. This is something you really wouldn't think about since when you're thinking about someone visible, you account for them and their clothes as one unit, but logically this may not be the case for Aizawa. But this pig guy here makes it kind of difficult. What do you guys think? Would clothes, either baggy or skin tight, prevent the quirk? Is this guy getting affected because his horns are exposed? Or is it because his eyes are still technically within the line of sight? Heck, what if people are covered from head to toe in metal armor? Is that obstructive enough? Or is this where the initial assumption of electromagnetic radiation falls apart? Another nice way of thinking about it is, if someone held a sheet of cloth in front of Aizawa's face, would the person behind it be affected by erasure? By this logic, Kurogiri should also be safe from Aizawa since he covers himself in black mist. Another cool case would be that if Aizawa is in total darkness and there's someone right in front of him, the quirk should still work since in that case, darkness isn't really an obstruction, it's just a lack of light entering the eyes. Those are logistics coming from an EM wave assumption. Let's look at something else, like how big exactly is the line of sight area? Erasure can affect multiple enemies at once, we've seen it. That means it's not just simply a straight line, it's got area to it. But how much? Here's a diagram of a person's field of vision. The question is, do people in Aizawa's peripherals get affected? Well, we know that Aizawa uses goggles to hide his line of sight. This implies no. Instead, it's probably that only people in focus are affected. If it's an EM wave, this just characterizes at what angle it's being emitted. To be safe, we can assume that it is within the 5 to 18 degree range. There's a weakness that comes from this though. Aizawa hasn't shown that he can pick and choose who in his line of sight gets cancelled. This means that if an ally is also caught in it, they're going to be cancelled. This however could justify why Aizawa is a solo hero who specializes in one versus many. He might just be doing it to minimize the chance of allies getting screwed up. Now there are a few quirk interactions that we can look at to work out some nuances. And guys, spoilers start here because we're going to be talking about some characters that haven't been revealed yet. First, Tetsu Tetsu. He turns his body into steel. The problem is with the wording of that quirk. Is he converting his flesh into steel? Or is he covering his body in steel? If he's coating it, we can realistically assume that Aizawa might not be able to do something about it because at this point you have to ask, what's the difference between hiding behind a stone wall and hiding behind steel? Does the thickness ultimately make a difference? Next up, twice his body doubles can't be cancelled. And this is a bit of a weirder thought. We know that if Todoroki or Momo made objects or ice, Aizawa can't cancel them, after all they're already produced, but those are technically natural substances. A clone is completely unnatural and it can only exist due to the quirk. So does that mean that the clone itself is a mutant type body? That's just a really interesting little like thought problem. Another one, Sun Eater. If Aizawa is looking at a tentacle, and just a tentacle, would Sun Eater get cancelled? Or is Sun Eater technically a mutant type after he's activated his quirk? And does that nature stop erasure from working? Or does Aizawa also need to be looking at the main body? We know that Aizawa doesn't need to see the face because we saw that Shigaraki got affected when he was turned away from Aizawa. Ultimately, Aizawa's quirk produces a lot of interesting cases and questions and it'd be really cool if we ever got to see more of Erasure's strengths or weaknesses. I for one would love to see Aizawa cancel someone through a mirror. So guys, that's pretty much it. A bit of a fast video, I was also talking pretty fast. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it gave you something to think about, and I hope it made you go like, yeah, that's a good point. But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, I hope you have a great day.